In this video, we're going to explore how we can create something more dynamic, changing a chart with the input. As you can see here, if you press on this slowly, it starts to adjust and it gives you a new input. And the same here, you can see here the title here, say, hello, change this. And as I type, you can see this is adjusting as well. So let's start to explore how we can create a new type of interactivity with input for Chart.js. In this video, we'll be focused on Chart.js user input. And with Chart.js, or basically with user input, you can make your chart a bit more interactive. So let's start exploring it immediately. So the first thing what I want you to do is make sure you go to Chart.js3.com and go to getting started. And on this page here, you can find the chunk of code that we're going to use. Just make sure you copy this code. And if you would like to understand the JavaScript in here, please check out this video here. And then we're going to paste this in here. Once I paste it, I'll copy this title here. This is for myself. So I know the title of this specific topic. All right, and refresh, and there we are. So now we have this nice bar chart here. And what I would like to do is just to create some basic inputs and reflect that on the chart here. And I have some older videos regarding to this, but that's based on Chart.js 2.9, and this is Chart.js 3.5 of course so that should have some updated videos on that so to do this all we have to do first is here in the canvas i would like to put in an input here so i'm going to say here an input and this input type equals number so i'm going to put in a number in here and i will add up a class as well so i will say here on key up because that's the most important thing here every time we put in we press a number in here or we do a key up at that moment, we want to trigger it. And so we will say here, update chart, that will be the function name, and the function name will be, or the value that we extract is not a fixed value, but it's this. And this refers to whatever we type in our input. Very important here. So don't get confused on this. So this is the, the argument. The argument is whatever is being typed on this specific input. And to make sure that this is clear, I'll just give it a, a ID as well, although the ID will not be used at all. So I say here, uh, bar value, doesn't matter. All right, so once we have this, I'm going to copy the code here, or this function here, and then we're going to create our function, and our function here will have the function name of update chart, and here we're going to get the parameter, and the parameter will be uh, bar values, that's all right. Basically, this parameter bar values is the this value, whatever we put in the input here. So to make sure that this is clear, I want to make a console log here and say bar values. So all we do here now is just to return the bar values in the console log. So refresh here, open up developer tab. You can see here the console, nothing is in here. But the moment you do a key up, so if I say if I press one, but I hold it yet, it does nothing. But if I do a key up, as you can see, it starts to show here the input ID of bar value. And I realize now what it really extracts is not this as the value, but the this of the entire input. So we need to do a tiny adjustment here. So I say here, this, or basically the bar values parameter. And then we say here dot value save. So we want to only extract the value of this. So now I do again one. There you are. If I do my key up for the uh, for the arrow arrow key up, as you can see, as I go up more and more, you can see that this is starting to show up more. But if I hold it and then let go, you can see now it jumps to 34. So it triggers the moment it is on key up. All right. So this is very straightforward. So what we would like to do now is to do something with an array. That the moment we we put a value in here or the user does a value in here, we want to adjust a value in the data here. So in this case, what I would like to do here, I will get here to my chart and let's pinpoint specifically this number 18. We're going to change that into the input that we select in here. Basically in the update chart function, we would update the value of the very first array data point into whatever we have in the input. So we say here, and then we say your config dot. So my chart stands for this constant here, basically, which is this part. 
Then we go into the config, and the config is an object. And in this object, we have a other object, which is the data. And the data goes here into data sets, and this is an array. So this is the first index, which is index zero, the first element or index zero, that's what we call it. And then we go here to data, and in the data, we want data zero, which is the first element as well. So we say here this data sets, remember zero, then dot. Oh, sorry, no, 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 this is wrong. Dot config dot data. Remember, we have to go first to the data, and then in the data sets, zero, and then here data, and then here this is the one we want to pinpoint zero, and then we say equal to bar values dot values. This is the one we want. And once we did that, we say my chart dot update. And once we did this, save this, and let's see what happens now. All right, we can do this now. And if I do here now, key up, and as you can see here now, the chart is gradually adjusting. And if I do a key up press, it will adjust it. But if I keep it, hold down, and then let go once it's somewhere like there. There you are. So this is basically the way how you can create a more interactive way with your inputs, you can do far more here. So what we could do as well is add a, ch uh, add a text, and this text could adjust this specific item. Your weekly sales could be adjusted. So let's do that one here into something else. So what I will say here is another input. And this input, I'll just leave the ID that's not necessary for now. And I'll say here uh, on key up, that could be as well. On key up, and then we say here this number is text, not a type, or type equals text, not a number. And of course, this one should be removed as well, or else we need to pinpoint it with an ID. So, what I will do here is I will say just update label. An update label will be based on this, on the key up, very same process. I'm going to make a new function for this. Of course, we could combine it, but for now, separate functions, you will see the differences. You can see how they respond as well. So I say your label name. This label name will be eventually this specific item here, the label here. So how do we get there? Well, first of all, do my chart dot, because we started my chart, and then down here, we go here into the config, for configuration dot and then once we are in here we need to go to the data because it is in here and we say data dot let's double check what's in the next point in the data we need to go to the data sets zero and then we have here the label so we say here data sets array zero and then dot the label if I'm not mistaken was it data data sets and then label as you can see here within the data sets this is an object that consists of multiple values here and of course colors could be changed anything could be changed it's the same methodology but this is all right for now then here we'll just say label name whatever we type in the label name and this of course remember this was a this and it will grab the entire input i don't want it i only want the value out of it so here label name dot value and we do the same thing here, mychart.update. And save this, refresh, and now this one should be for that part. And then here, the weekly sales says, hello. As you can see, as I type, it starts to change. Hello, this is a dynamic label. There we are. So with this, you can play around with, of course, this is probably the least functional one you could change it with colors as well etc etc but this is just a tiny part of it what we could do and maybe i guess that's as a bonus i would like to show you just one more thing that's this one here so in here we have this but maybe we don't want to pinpoint this we want to add it here at the very end and we want to remove the first value so basically it rotates so let's do that one because that's a nice exercise as well so to do this, we need to work with push, because basically what we're going to do is we're going to push a value 
into the array and remove at the very beginning of the array a item or a value that's what we call a shift push is adding a value at the very end of the array so what we're going to do here we're going to do this push and all we will do now is I'm going to copy everything here and all we type in here is shift and remove everything else here shift removes a value so we don't need to specify what we want to remove it just removes the very first value of the array which would be the number 18 so if I save this now you will see something nice I refresh here and now if I put in a key up what is happening here now it slowly changes here this has become one and the 18 has been gone so if I do here number two and number three number four it just takes some time because it needs to reload here with the animation and there we are so now we have this here and probably in a line chart it might look a bit more interesting so let's convert this into a line chart save refresh you can see here now uh, let's go there we are and I'm just kind of surprised why this here or this label here is adjusted so we can say hello maybe I maybe I press on I guess probably I click here on or something there you are. If I refresh, it shows again. But if you look at this here, we have these lines. It takes some time here. And then if I go down again, it starts to adjust again. And that's it. So basically, with this, you can do a lot of items here. And this is just the starting point with Chart.js. And if you're interested to become more advanced, I would highly recommend you to check this video out about to create uh, how to create clickable bar charts with a link in Chart.js. So then you are not only making interactivity around with an input, but also interactivity on the bar itself by clicking on it, being directed to any other page, which is quite interesting as well.